um, making some alterations. If we look at this, all right, we'll see what we had last time, which consisted of our layout. It's going to think about for a minute here. Actually, it created a lot of resource folders that we didn't necessarily use in this example, and we could have deleted them, except I'm superstitious now because doing things like that got me into trouble on, uh, on Tuesday. Here is our um, layout, which is a linear layout, which means things just flow from top to bottom. All right. Uh, the other alternatives we had is we had a table layout, and we also had a relative layout where we position one thing based on some other thing. Um, I have text views for a greeting, an edit text field, uh, I have a button, and then I have a text view for the result. Again, it set up some additional values folders if I wanted to have different strings in the case of a, a different setting, uh, different settings, different options. Which I don't really need to do, but um, we'll leave them in there. We'll see later on there's a styles file and a dimension file, and that allows us to play around with setting some things so that we're setting less things in code. The whole idea of, I guess, what I'd, I'd classify as modern programming. Um, is that you do things in components and you try to keep things as separate as possible. And the reason for that is that allows you to do to change one thing without messing up something else. We're only interested in this example in the strings and the strings we have the strings um, for our application, the labels and so on. Finally, we have our main activity, which does what our activities have done so far, and that is first it associates our XML layout, which is in R for resources, layout activity underscore main, uses that XML file and it brings it to life. So now we have all those objects that we described in the XML file floating out there on the heap. We need to point to those things. All right, how do we point to those things? We point to those things by using find view by ID and then putting in the respective ID. So because our button has an ID of ID convert. We can point to that button by saying convert equals button find view by ID R ID convert. So we're setting our instance variable, which is of type button, to the control on the page that has an ID of, co of convert. We cast it as a button because we know that that's what it is. We know that it's a button and we want to treat it like a button. That find view by ID is going to return just some generic view object. Could be any kind of view, right, depending on what that ID points to. Well, we know. We wrote the view, so we know that that's going to point to a button. And what's more, we want to treat it like a button. We want to be able to do things when you click on the button. And we want to access properties of the text edit fields and so on. So we cast them as a button. So we say, this returns a view object, but let me treat it as a button. Button, of course, being a subclass of view. All right, I couldn't cast that to something that wasn't a view. I have to cast it because buttons are an example of a view. And of course, if, if someone went and screwed up my user interface and changed the ID um, of this you know, to, to something that wasn't a button, then it would blow up when it tried to cast it as a button because it wouldn't be able to, con it wouldn't be able to convert it. Um, to a button. Next thing I do is I set an on-click listener. All right. The on-click listener, again, is the code that's going to handle what happens when that button gets clicked. That's the most important thing, so to speak, uh, that's associated with the button, is we want to do something when the button gets clicked. 
So I'm, I'm putting in as the on click listener a convert click listener object, which I define down here. Oops, which I define here. I define my convert click listener object as a new on click listener. And by virtue of the fact that this is an on-click listener, I have to write code for what happens when the button gets clicked. I have to override, I have to implement that method. So if I do this, it's giving me an error here. All right. Why? Because I must implement that method. So I put that in there. It said that an abstract method was on this class and I had to implement it. An abstract method is when you, when you identify that any member of that class has to have that method. So in other words, I can't, and it makes sense if you think about it. If I create a non-click listener, I better have some code for what happens when something gets clicked, right? It would make no sense to associate a non-click listener and simply not do anything when it's clicked. So therefore, it's warning me, all right, because an on-click listener is actually an interface, none of the methods in that class are actually implemented. An interface simply describes what methods we need to implement, all right? Another way of saying the methods we need to implement is that they are abstract methods. In other words, there's no specific code for them. There's just a definition that says, Anything that implements one of these guys has to have these methods. And in the case of the onClick uh, listener, it is the onClick event. So I have my code here. And my code, again, public void onClick. That's a method that gets fired off when it's clicked. It gets past the view that got click. It gets past that whether we want it or not, right? That's just part of the Android framework that it gets past that. And we do whatever we want to do. In this case, what I do is I grab from the amount the value of text that's in the amount, and I change that to a string. The reason I do this is because a text box or an edit text field is by definition a string. So its text property is going to be a string, not a number. Even though we defined in the XML file to only allow numbers, that text box still conceivably could have other stuff in it. Well, what I'm doing here is I am implementing, actually, I think we need to do it in this case. But what the app override, what the override does is it specifies that I am overriding a function on the ancestor. Notice our main activity extends activity, and I'm overriding this method, which is a method on the ancestor. This particular one doesn't need to be here because this, I'm not extending the class. I'm implementing an interface. Don't think it will give me any grief if I go and do that. All right, I grab the value from the text box, and I convert it to a double. I do my little mathematical expression, and then I set the value of the text view to the number that I computed converted to a string. I did the little trick of boxing, all right? I declared C as a double with a capital D, meaning that it is an object reference. It is not a primitive. Primitives don't have methods like to string. But an object, double, with a capital D, does have a two-string method. So it's just a little more convenient to say two-string and do it that way. I go and run this. I... I I typically upload the application. Well, in this case, I didn't upload the application because it's so close to your, um, so close to your um, um, actual assignment. Um, 
I, the answer, I guess, is no, I don't have screenshots of it. Uh, normally, I will upload, um, in the past, I've uploaded the, uh, some of the examples, and there's a Deedle example. I didn't really think it was, anything, it was necessary to upload an example in this case because, again, this is so similar to your assignment that you just have to tweak a couple things to get the answer, and I didn't want you to do that. I wanted you to go through the exercise of actually creating uh, that. And again, the specifics of this is less important than how these things connect and talk to each other. Yes? Okay. Well, you're always you're always welcome to say, "Okay, I'm a little behind. Can you slow down and and mention that again or whatever?" So you're welcome to do that as well. What are we looking at? To do auto-generated method stub. That's just a comment that was put in. I guess my suggestion would be to look at one of the other examples I uploaded. Look at the simple um, calculator. But it's uploaded to Angel, so don't read it off the video. Download it, and you'll have the actual co code. Yeah, but it's nice to follow along with your explanation. Okay. Well, like I said, feel free to slow me down and and um, and go from there, or feel free to ask for clarification in lab. So, this is where we left off last time. Let's do some things with this. The first thing I want to do is, in principle, I never want to have code of any significance in my event handler, in my event listener. All right? In other words, that conversion from Fahrenheit to centigrade is, if you will, a business rule. Or probably more, more specifically, you know, since you don't really want to call it a business rule, it's a, pro it's a rule in the problem domain. In other words, can you imagine I was a weather channel and I had an, uh, an app to convert or, or to display the, the weather? There might be a bunch of different places where I want to convert the weather from Fahrenheit to centigrade could be a bunch of different places. All right. If this code is tied up on this event, then I would have to duplicate this code all the other places I wanted to invoke it. And that's not good. It's not good because if I have to repeat code, there's always a chance that I'm going to get something wrong. All right. Or if something changes, there's always a chance that I'm going to miss changing it in one spot. Now, Fahrenheit to centigrade, the rules for that are very clearly defined, and that's not ever going to change. However, if you could imagine other things that would be relevant to a business, like maybe calculating shipping, all right, or something along those lines, calculating discounts for, that are offered to different organizations or whatever. Those are things that could have extensive calculations to them. You know, you go on to Amazon and, and you, you buy something, there's choices of ways to ship it, and depending on which method you take, there's a different cost for shipping. Then there's different rules that say, well, if you uh, purchase more than X amount of dollars, you get free shipping. Or we're running a special promotion that with this item you get free shipping. Or any number of different logic rules that could come into play when calculating shipping costs. We wouldn't want to duplicate that several places in our app, all right? Because then if something changes about it, we're sunk, and we have to go and change it in two or three places, and we run the risk of an error. Therefore, we're going to put our business logic or 
probably in this case better, better described as a problem domain logic, we're going to put in a class by itself. We're going to put it in it by itself, so we're going to make a little con component, a little temperature component, we'll call it, or weather component. All right? And we could put everything we wanted to in that weather component. Maybe we convert miles per hour for wind to kilometers per hour. I don't know. We could do a lot of different things in that weather component. One of the things that we could do in the weather component is we could con convert Fahrenheit to centigrade. I guess the other thing we could do is we could convert centigrade to Fahrenheit. All right? So everything about the weather that is not relating to the user interface but is the rules for conversions or whatever we're going to do, we're going to put in this class. We then can use that class wherever we need it. Again, we're getting back to the mentality of components and separating pieces of the app into components. All right? We, to the degree possible, we want to not have business logic or problem domain logic in the user interface. If we separate those things, we have the effect of we can use that problem domain logic with a variety of user interfaces. Or we can change the user interface without worrying about having to change the problem domain logic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to create a class. All right, a custom class. And it's a simple class, to be sure. But I'm going to call it weather. It's going to be a public class. None of those other things really apply. So I'm going to finish. So I now have a public class named weather. And I'm going to create a method to convert Fahrenheit to centigrade. public double convert F to C. It's going to accept as an argument a double and it's going to return a double. And of course, we haven't put anything in yet, so it's not returning anything. This is the syntax for declaring a function in Java. First of all, we have the scope of it. This is public, which means that anyone can create this class, which makes sense. This is the whole reason why we're making this class, right? I didn't get that message. I'm not sure what you typed in. You just went to file. Pardon me? Okay. okay. All right. So public indicates that other folks can create this class. Or I'm sorry, other folks can call this function. The public on the class indicates that people can create the class. Public here means that people can, other, other, uh, classes can call this method. The double means it's going to return a double. This is the name of the function and the arguments are it's going to accept a double. If you think about it, you know, think of a function as asking a question. When we ask a question, we have to supply some additional information. For example, if I were to say, what's the temperature? All right. I'd have to supply what city the temperature I'm interested in. So what's the temperature in Illyria? What's the temperature in Honolulu? What's the temperature in Mexico City? All right. So in that case, the location would be an argument to the function. Argument is additional piece of information. 
Here I'm saying I want to convert from Fahrenheit to centigrade. Well, what is it I want to convert? I want to convert the temperature that I'm going to pass to this function in the argument. Well, actually, I'll change that to arg temperature. So, in order to do this calculation, to convert the temperature from Fahrenheit to centigrade, I have to tell you what the degrees Fahrenheit are. I can't say, well, convert from Fahrenheit to centigrade. I'd say, well, convert what? And then you could say, well, 212 degrees or 53 degrees or whatever. So the arguments are parameters. They're, inf they're, they're, they're more information about the question that we're asking the function. This first double is what it's going to return. In other words, what is the answer going to be? All right. And in this case, the answer is going to be a double. I'm going to do the calculation based on a double. I'm going to get back a double. All right. So I'm going to return the temperature as a double, and I'm going to accept as an input a double. With a function, you can only return one of something. All right. With a function, you can only return one of something. So I can't return a double and a Boolean, for example. Now that something I return could itself be an object. So I could return one object. And that object can have multiple properties or, properties or methods. But I can only return one of something. All right. In this case, I'm returning one primitive, which is a double. All right. Here I'm going to put my code to calculate this. Calculating, I'm defining a double as a variable. I'm saying C equals the formula to calculate from Fahrenheit to centigrade, which takes the arg temperature, subtracts 32 from it, and multiplies by 5 ninths. Then finally, when I'm done, I return the variable. So now, this function, this code here, isn't tied to any user interface. This function here in this class simply does a job. You tell it what temperature in Fahrenheit you want, it does its thing, and outputs the temperature in centigrade. All right? So the input arguments are the temperature in Fahrenheit. The return value is the temperature in centigrade. It doesn't care where you got the input temperature uh, from. It doesn't care what you do with the results. All right. I might want to display the results on a label. I might want to look at the temperature, and if it's warm, put a nice sunny image on my web page, or not web page, but app screen. If it's cold, put a snowy picture on my app uh, screen. I could do any number of things with this temperature. All right. But this function doesn't care what I do with it. This function doesn't care where I got the value from for the input, and it doesn't care what I do with the output. That's the job of the user interface. So all this does is the problem domain logic. This contains a knowledge about how I convert Fahrenheit to centigrade. No one else now has to worry about that, ever, in our application. All right? So I could have five different activities going on in my app, and each one doing Fahrenheit to centigrade conversion, or calculating shipping charge, or whatever, this would be the only place that I would need to worry about that. Which is great for maintainability, right? If there's a bug in here, if I fix it in that one place, 
everywhere gets the benefit of the bug change because I'm not duplicating code anywhere. Now, what I have to do though is I have to hook that user interface to this. So, what I'm going to do is say whether w whoops, equals new weather. What does that do? That creates a object of class weather. So now my variable w points to an instance of that object. And I can go and I can call a method on that object and pass it the parameters and get the results. So I can say w dot convert Fahrenheit to centigrade and pass it the value of f. Oops. Which I got from my text box line up here. So what am I doing? I've created an instance of this object. So I now have an object of type weather pointed to by W. Since I have an instance of that, I can call my convert Fahrenheit to centigrade function, give it the temperature I want to convert. It's going to do its thing and then take the results and put it in C and then C will be used to display the answer on the form. Make sure it still works. So I'll go here. And run it. Pick my device. And if I put in 32 Fahrenheit, that should be zero degrees centigrade. And if you trust me or have great eyesight, you'll see it still works. Now, this might seem like a small deal for you. That's because this is a pretty simple, straightforward example. All right. It's a one-liner to calculate Fahrenheit to centigrade. And that's something that's uh, a definition, right? It's not going to change. You know, someone's not going to come and say, well, from now on, we're going to calculate the conversion from Fahrenheit to centigrade this way. It's not going to happen. And that's the rules. That's what it's defined as. That's what it's going to stay as. If you expand your thinking to, to, to thinking of some other kind of calculation, like I said, shipping cost, um, converting currency, uh, calculating tax, any number of different more extensive calculations, you should be able to see that it benefits to putting it and isolating it somewhere where that functionality is encapsulated. In other words, anything I want to know about the weather is going to come through this class. All right. If this function's wrong, to correct it, I just correct the function in one place. I don't have to go around tracking down every place I do it. As long as I don't change the signature of the function, that is, the name of the function, what arguments it requires, and what it returns, I should never have to worry about changing anyone else, no matter what I do to this code here. Questions about this? For those of you that may have a little more extensive Java or programming background, I actually could probably make this a static function. Uh, a static function means that it's not associated with any particular object. It's, it's, it's associated with the class as a whole. 
I could then call the function a little bit differently. And it would work the same. Um, I don't really need, I, I don't really want to worry about that at this point. Um, if you're intrigued by that and, and want to know what you'd need to do to do that, I can, I can talk about it. The idea is, is that the conversion of Fahrenheit to centigrade doesn't depend on what specific weather incident you're speaking of, right? It's just, it's just like a rule of math. Just like the value of pi, or the, you know, doesn't depend on what kind, which circle you're talking about, right? The value of pi is the value of pi. Now the radius of a circle, that depends on what circle you're talking about, right? Um, or the, 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 the forecasted temperature for tomorrow, that depends on what weather forecast you're speaking of. So those would have to exist on the class le or on the object level. But something that's just mathematical, like a conversion like this, or the value of pi, that actually doesn't depend on the specific weather forecast or on the specific circle. And therefore, I could make it a static method. Questions about this? All right, let's go on and let's take a minute to think about what I would need to do to make this do both conversions. That is, either from Fahrenheit to centigrade or centigrade to Fahrenheit. Right now, it only does Fahrenheit to centigrade. What would I need to change to make it do centigrade to Fahrenheit? Make this app do, do both, either one. Take a second to think about. Oh, go ahead. Well, do you mean with the same method? Or can you make it just another method? You get to tell me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give my answer to that question. One thing to keep in mind is, is this could be done a couple of different ways, or a bunch of different ways probably. So let's spend a second thinking about it and think of what you'd have to do. Put differently, what would we have to change? Do we have to change the UI? Yeah. Why do we have to change the UI? We'd have to be able to select, do we want to do centigrade to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to centigrade? So that's one thing we'd have to change. We're probably, if we're changing the UI, we're probably going to have to change the strings file too because there's probably going to be some string literals in there that we, that we want. Are we going to have to change the main activity? Yeah. Um, now exactly what we do is going to depend on what we do to this class. What are we going to do to this class? We kind of have two choices here. Two main choices. You could probably think of others, but two immediate choices pop to mind. You mentioned one. We could make another function that said convert Fahrenheit to centigrade. All right. What would our other option be? Yeah. You could make one with an if statement that took two arguments. In other words, or maybe even three arguments, right? What was, uh, what's the temperature that you want to convert, what scale is it on, and what scale do you want it to be. That way, um, if we wanted to do Kelvin, for example, another kind of temperature, would, have, would be in a position to do that. All right. Or we could just write two different functions and say you have a calculate Fahrenheit to centigrade, calculate centigrade to Fahrenheit. Really doesn't bother me which way you do it, either way would be acceptable. All right. Um, if you anticipated changing it so there'd be a lot more, it probably would be better to come up with something that accepted three arguments. All right. The um, value of the temperature, the scale of the temperature, and the scale that you wanted the output in. All right. Given the fact that there's probably only a couple of different temperature systems, and we're not going to worry about Kelvin because unless you're a scientist, you don't worry about Kelvin uh, and a standard weather app. We're never going to express temperatures outside. You know, it is, you know, it is, um, what would a respectable temperature be? It is 300 degrees Kelvin out today. Do I wear a coat or not? I don't know. All right, who knows? I 
I don't know. I think that would put it like 80 something, but who knows in Fahrenheit. So we'll just say, okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna convert. We're just gonna create a second function. So I'll go and in which case to to rewind a bit. In which case, how do we have to change this on click event? Well, the on click event is going to have to tell what the value of the spinner was. So we're going to need a pointer to the spinner. We have to tell what the spinner was. And depending on what was selected in the spinner, either we call Fahrenheit to centigrade or we call centigrade to Fahrenheit. All right. This is going to be probably pretty typical of any like app or app changes that we do. It's very likely that it's going to require changes to the user interface, changes to the string, changes to um, our Java classes. So let's go in here and let's pick, let's create a spinner control. copy that into my GUI. Android I ID, um, we'll call that conversion type. Android entries are going to come from an array we'll call scales and the prompt will be select scale. All right. So now I'll go into my strings file and create a string array. What I said that will be in a string array called scales. So I'll go and change this to scales. And I need a string that says select scale. Choose conversion type. And finally, this isn't always doing Fahrenheit to centigrade anymore. It's doing both. So I'll change that simply to say convert. Now again, big fan of testing just a piece at a time. I've done the UI. I haven't done anything with the code. So I'm not doing anything with the code at all yet. So I'm going to go and run it to make sure at least the GUI looks the way that I would expect it to. So I go and run this. And oh, it doesn't. Why not? Because I didn't change this. So Fahrenheit to centigrade. Okay. 
center grade to Fahrenheit. You probably noticed that I copy and pasted code. I do that partly because that's quicker to do, partly because, uh, you know, it, uh, if I don't remember something off the top of my head, it's just easier to do that. Do notice, though, that I change, like, the names of things. I don't keep the old names. All right. In other words, I, it, that used to be level of service. I change it to scales because that reflects what, what that string array is in this application. All right, so let's go and run this. And sure enough, we have our choices. I click on this. We can pick what we want. Doesn't do anything yet, but we can go and do our thing. All righty. So, in our activity, I'm going to create a instance variable here for the spinner called scale. Little squiggly underline there. What does that mean? Well, given the fact that I know that it's called a spinner and I didn't get it wrong, I simply have not imported that class yet. So I'll click the import spinner. Oops, maybe. There we go. And we should be okay. All right. Now I'm going to say scale equals cast a spinner, because we know that it is a spinner. Find view by ID. And what did we call the ID for that? We called it conversion type. For consistency, I'll change that to scale. There we go. It recognizes it there because I hadn't saved yet the change I made to the XML. All right. So now what do I want to do? I want to test the value from the scale. How do I do that? Well, it's probably got to be some kind of if statement, right? So if scale dot and let's see what method we have. There's a whole bunch of methods. Get selected item. <coughs> Bless you. Now, is that what I used in the other one? Let's verify that. get selected item position.
What that's doing is that's testing to see which one is picked. Is the first one picked? Is the second one picked? Is the third one picked? So if that equals zero, then what? Then I want to do Fahrenheit to centigrade. If it's not equal to zero, I want to do centigrade to Fahrenheit. So again, selected item position relates to the position in the drop down. This is that's item zero, that's item one. So if it's item zero, I want to do fa convert Fahrenheit to centigrade. Otherwise, I want to do convert centigrade to Fahrenheit. Now, I haven't written that function yet, so that's what I'll do next. Oops. This function is just about the same as this one. It's going to accept the same argument. It's going to return a double. Difference is, is it will be temperature times 9 over 5 plus 32. All right. So, are we working? Let's give it a shot. Run as Android app. Alrighty here. I put in select Fahrenheit to centigrade, 32 degrees, convert, and it shows zero degrees. I put in select 100 and I select centigrade to Fahrenheit and convert, it shows us 212. So that is working. What if I put nothing in there Ooh. and click convert? Now I did it. <laughs> It said, unfortunately, conversion has stopped or whatever. What happened? Why did that blow up when I put nothing in there? Pardon me? It didn't catch any exception. Didn't catch any exception. In other words, we look at our main code. We look at what line blew up. It was this guy. All right. That guy blew up. That guy tried to turn the value of the text box into a double. Well, it can convert nothing to a double. All right, so it blew up. All right? So, how do we handle this? All right. There's a couple ways we could handle it. We could put an if statement around it to say make sure that there's something in there. The other thing we can do is we can put wrap a try catch around any instructions that um, we think are problematic. So I could do something like this. Try. And I put a block. around this All right Catch 
ever remember the syntax of a catch? All right, so how does this work? It's going to do these statements, or rather, it's going to try to do these statements. If any of these statements run into problems, and really, the only one that ought to run into problems is this one here. All right? The only way that I could think of that there would be a problem. But maybe there's stuff I can't think of, so who knows. So I actually wrap, I could actually wrap all of this in a try catch. That probably would be better. Oops. It's going to try all these. If something bad happens, that is some kind of a legal operation. Like if I tried to divide by zero, maybe, or if I tried to refer to an object that didn't exist, or I, in this case, try to convert something that's not a number into a number, all right? Java will throw an exception, all right? Think of an exception as like an error, but it's like an error that you can kind of recover from. In other words, if someone hit convert without putting in a temperature, there's no reason for us to, to blow up the app like happened there. A nice little message might be a better way to do it. So what I'm going to do is, if there's any kind of a problem, I'm going to put in some verbiage that says, cannot convert, be sure you enter a number. Now, if I go and do that, So now I go, enter, try to do a conversion with nothing in that box. It doesn't blow up. It simply a displays a message that says, cannot convert, be sure to enter a number. Now, question. I did something bad right there. All right. I mean, not something illegal. I mean, I know, you ever notice there's like cops that walk by sometimes? You know, it's funny. It's like, I, I, I never do anything illegal, but it's still, when a cop walks by the classroom, it's like, ooh, did I, po did I display something that's copyrighted or something? Are they, are they going to drag me off here? What did I do that was wrong here? What did I do that was wrong in this code? I'll tell you what it isn't. I could have been more sophisticated in my catching of exceptions and look for certain kinds of exceptions. So I could have done a I could have done a more thorough job with that. But it isn't bad what I did here. No. No. There's no return from from that. Let's imagine that someone in France is running this application. 
all right? And they click convert and they didn't put a value in. Cannot convert, be sure you entered a number. I don't know what that means. I speak French, I don't speak English, all right? So what should I have done instead? Pardon me? Should have used a string. I should have set a string variable for the air. So I should have said something like this. Cannot convert. Oops. Be sure you enter a number. All right. Then I can go here and I can say set the text to, let's see if I get this right, r dot string dot error. I'm thinking I'm showing an error because I haven't saved this guy. So let's go save everything. Yep, that was it. So now I, the, the error message I'm popping up on the screen isn't a hard-coded string, but comes from my strings file. Still should work, but I have the advantage of if I um, want to localize this application and create a French resource strings, um, I can do that and that error message will be localized then to whatever, whatever the language of the installed system is. So now I go and do that. And I get the error message that come from the string file. Might be a little hard to see, but trust me on this. I'll tell you what, I will post a, uh, I will post this example, even though it's kind of close to one of your assignments. Um, you did raise a good point about the readability of this, so I will make sure that, that um, I, I post this example. What well, I'd like everyone to try to do, all right, and this might be something we'll look at on Tuesday, try to work a seek bar in here for temperature. In other words, instead of typing in the temperature, slide that guy back and forth and input the temperature that way, like we did kind of with the tip percentage, all right? So that's something to try. Um, if, you know, um, it, well, it's not like a homework assignment, but um, it's good if you try these things and run into issues and all that and bring the issues that you run into to class so that we can, we can uh, go over them. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely do that um, first thing um, on uh, Tuesday's class. Any questions about this? All right. We'll see you up in lab.